think you suggest somewhere here about a hundred tons of, of microbial uh, biomass in, in total that that might be able to seed um, well actually dozens of of, of these planets or, or solar systems that, that we're talking about uh, and, and you even calculated launch costs about ten thousand uh, dollars per kilogram right that's the going cost that's not my number okay okay um, mm-hmm. um, but given that number, now again it depends. Um, if we are aiming at some of these uh, accreting solar nebula, which are much closer than the interstellar cloud, um, we can get away with a few grams of material from using the same calculations, which is very easy and very cheap relatively to launch. Um, if we are aiming at, a, at an interstellar cloud, uh, which is much easier to hit, but there is much more mass there in which these missions are diluted, in these capsules are diluted, then you need more. So depending on the target, it can go from grams to hundreds of tons. Mm. And, uh, co- and the launch cost itself can go from very little to maybe a billion dollars, if I estimate it. Now, that is something that I don't think it would be done right away, uh, but it is uh, something that uh, if, let's say, a government, we don't find a government like NASA and, and uh, for various reasons to ever do it. Once you have an in- infrastructure in space, maybe the space colonies, uh, space stations, further out from the uh, deeper in space, you know, but in this solar system. Uh, then it will be much, much cheaper and easier for just a small group of people who believe that this is the right thing to do. It will be much easier to do all of this. So mm. we are in the next decades or, or certainly century or two, we should have a significant infrastructure in space, people living there for various reasons. Mm. And it's much easier for them to go ahead with this project. So how how long... Have you come in your plans, and, and has there been any, any, if I put it that way, real interest in terms of other space organizations or, or, or governments or scientific groups that, that think, yeah, we, we want to, uh, you know, try this out. We want to, you know, uh, at least on, on a, um, a theoretical level, uh, begin to, to calculate how this would be done and so forth. I know that you've obviously done a lot of work on this yourself, but have you been approached by anyone who's showed more interests, uh, interest in this, Michael? Well, um, I uh, I think that uh, it is probably too early, and and uh, 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 right now I wouldn't expect uh, any kind of major organization like that. I do have a website where I invite people who read the website and and agree to kind of join this group that I call Society for Life in Space and uh, and to work to the, on the various details of that. So I'm working on that. I just also joined or was invited to join an organization called Lifeboat. I don't know if you're familiar with that. No. Uh, it's, it's, an, it's an organization where some very, very... Uh, futuristic minds and, and very respectable scientists, really, uh, looking at the various dangers to life on Earth and to humans on Earth and um, uh, how, to, uh, how to avoid those, those dangers. Mm-hmm. And uh, which, uh, people who have probably similar types of thinking uh, on the subject. So I think that uh, I am looking at something that may happen fairly, you know, down in, 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 in decades or, or, or maybe a century or two from now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And really my objective is uh, I'm not all that long, and uh, this is, I would just like to, you know, people who, who agree, who agree to the philosophy so that we need to secure life and advance it in space. Uh, and who think this is, uh, believe that this is something that we should do, mm. uh, 
I would like, like to people to work on this idea and to carry on, carry it on until it becomes a reality. Uh, what, what don't you right now, I think that space, space, sort of space you know, the, the major space agencies are looking at more immediate and practical uh, things to do than that. Yes, I understand what you're, what you're saying there. And what, what, uh, why don't you give us some, some websites then? Uh, you have a group called, as you said, Society for... Uh, life in space or solace yeah. solace for short uh, yeah. where do people go on the web to to find out more about that okay it's www.panspermia-society.com very good panspermia uh, hyphen or dash society.com yeah, okay. that's the place to yeah. go uh, very yeah, interesting. and I, let me mention also that i have a book at amazon.com called uh, Feeding the Universe with Life, Securing Our Cosmological Future, the title. Give us, and, a, give uh, us the title again. Uh, feeding the Universe with Life, colon, sec Securing Our Cosmological Future. All right. Seeding the Universe with Life. We'll give it up, uh, we'll give up Michael Maltner. And, uh, uh, and there, of course... Uh, it's all explained in what I hope is readable, material, readable form, and it also contains for the more technically minded uh, reprints of some of the papers and some of my papers on, on the related subject. Mm, okay. I, I would like to ask you uh, some kind of off the wall, so to speak, stuff here, and and ask for you to speculate a little bit as well, uh, because one thing obviously that that comes up in all of this, as we alluded to it at the beginning of this program as well is the the idea that it, it has happened elsewhere life might have come from out there so to speak and, and ended up on this planet uh, but what I'd like you to speculate a little bit about is if you think that this scenario that you are talking about now has actually happened in the so elsewhere in, in the past meaning that another sentient life form out there might have come to similar conclusions and then sent their life forms here, uh, so in, in in the extension or in the in the speculation way, we can say that we are part of them. We are the ETs, if you follow my uh, my train of thought. There, w what's your take on this, Michael? Do you have you ever thought about that? Well, uh, yes, well, that that is actually that is exactly the hypothesis that Leslie Orgel and Francis Crick, uh, you know, published in their paper in 1973. Mm. Uh, they gave some evidence. Uh, I think it was something that uh, some microorganism emit vanadium, some rare element that is not common on Earth, but maybe common somewhere else. And so uh, it was it's very, really very speculative, but this was exactly their hypothesis. Uh, then uh, again, it is entirely speculative, and uh, it is possible. But I think that uh, if I was to believe that there is life out there, then I would uh, much rather believe that it it is it is brought here uh, by some rocks or, or some other natural mechanism mm -hmm. rather than an intelligent uh, society. Mm -hmm. It is. Again, uh, we have to remember that life in space, there is not one piece of evidence today, not one piece, that life exists anywhere else except Earth. So uh, now I think that we will know within a few decades uh, when we send the Kepler mission and then follow-up missions to look for signs of life in other planets like an oxygen atmosphere, for example, or chlorophyll. Uh, that we can detect. Uh, we will know much better if life exists out there. Uh, if it does, well, uh, of course, then we have much less worry about perpetuating it. Um, I would still say that even in that case, we should still be sure that our particular form of life is, after all, that's what we are, the that survives. Uh, so, uh, one point that I should like, like to make is that we would probably not be able to find out for sure if there is life elsewhere unless we send probes there. But a probe at the speed that we are talking about will take 
tens of thousands of years or hundreds of thousands of years to get somewhere and send back a signal.